I'm Corbett Wall with USDA Livestock and Grain Market News. Here with your weekly feeder and stocker cattle market summary for the week ending January the 18th where markets turned south uh, in a big way. Feeder calves and short yearlings weighing over 600 pounds sold three to five dollars lower and most of that turning four to eight dollars lower late in the week on your uh, late sales in the country and your Thursday auctions. Lightweight calves under 600 pounds and, and especially those uh, weighing five and a half and down were unevenly steady ranging from five dollars lower to five dollars higher and probably mostly higher in the places that they were offered. Uh, the southeast did not have a very good test this week because they had kind of a winter storm down in that area. They had heavy rains down in there and some snow which they're not used to. Uh, a lot of the sales had real light receipts and a lot of your shippers were just not really in the market putting anything together so the market was real volatile down there although they did get some good moisture down there and, and they're one of the few places that raise a lot of cattle that are getting some good moisture but that tight supply driven uh, rally that, uh, that these feeder cattle have really been on here for the last several weeks and months and we saw a big jump there last week during the first full week of trading in the new year but uh, all that has been happening right in the face of uh, a feed shortage that we know is very serious and also the struggling economy and, and things like that. But uh, these feeder cattle have just kept brushing all that off. Well, this week all that stuff caught up and, and it just was an accumulation of things. It started out last Friday with the USDA crop report there that uh, it uh, projected downward the uh, ending stocks of, of most all your grains and really kind of put everybody in fear that we're going to run out of grain before we get to the new crop and whether or not that happens we haven't had a lot of demand from outside the United States for our crop what's left of it there but now we're starting to see some of that come in which is lowering the stocks some and and there's just a uh, a lot of fears there that they, they keep missing the the estimate of what what they have on the on the ending stocks and whenever they adjust it downward there that it just starts to get pretty scary and that became a big reality this week it uh, helped make the futures market tank you know basically from the middle of last week on all through this week and the last eight uh, CME trading sessions your uh, nearby fat cattle contracts have lost eight dollars feeder contracts nine dollars and uh, you know when your futures drop that fast you know you just can't ever catch up we haven't found any footing as of yet and it's late Friday here and then we come into the week this week with most of our feeder cattle outlets pretty well clogged up because we had such a heavy run across the country last week and some of those feedlots and growing yards are still getting those cattle in trying to get them worked and trying to find enough hay to get them a starting ration going and you just had a, a lot of cattle trying to be choked down one funnel at one time. Then on Thursday this week uh, they come out with the announcement that uh, Cargill in Plainview is going to be idled, uh, basically going to stop production there for uh, pretty well an endless uh, amount of time. That, you know, uh, Cargill was citing the, the loss of, of cattle in that area and not enough head counts to keep it open and that's not going to change anytime soon so probably more than likely that uh, that plant won't be reopened for a long time unless it's sold or something like that but that's that's roughly 4,500 head a day uh, of processing right there a lot of those cattle will go to Freona or maybe to some other plants there in the Texas Panhandle but it's very negative news coming out Fat cattle sold one to 250 lower this week from 122 and a half to 125, and at 122 and a half in Nebraska, that is significantly lower than just a week or two ago, when guys thought they were going to get a dollar 30, which is the all-time record up on your uh, live fat cattle there. But uh, just everything's been very bearish. Uh, your stock show specials are right in the middle of those out in uh, Colorado right now and because uh, the National Western's going on there in Denver and, and 
it's just unfortunate timing on some of those guys if they sold in the in the early specials there you know really got some high top prices for that but you fear the way that this late week went next week's probably not going to be very close to what those early specials brought we're still seeing some big high prices you know this week in bassett nebraska on wednesday which fairly late in the week over 650 head of fancy 650 to 700 pound steers averaged over 170 and a quarter so you know we're still seeing big prices out there your best demand by far is for those light cattle which there's not hardly any of them but those little peewee stalker cattle weighing you know sure under five and a half and maybe under four and a half that's where everything's at that's where all your options are and we know that those cattle are just going to be so tight and the demand is going to be so heavy for those this spring really no matter how much moisture we get and, and any moisture that we do get is just going to increase the the demand uh, for those calves coming out but uh, those little light 450 weights not only can you get a cheap gain on them if we happen to have some early uh, grass and any grass that we do have but uh, any grazing weight that you put on those is going to be a lot cheaper than what feed you can find for them but uh, they also uh, can be fattened on uh, the new crop of corn which we've got high expectations for that because we've been below expectations the last two or three years so if you can fatten those cattle on, ne on uh, this next corn crop and, and uh, cheapen them up on grass say we do have some grass that's where that's where it's at right there on those cattle and there's not very many of them around uh, most of your calves coming in are weighing five and a half, six, six and a half and on up uh, and they're really just feeder cattle. I mean they're, they're not a year old but uh, a lot of them have a yearling look to them but uh, most of these calves weighing much over 500 pounds and sure over 550. If you try to hold those cattle until grass gets here you got to feed them something and then they're going to get too fleshy and they're really fleshier than, and heavier than what you want to turn out on grass. And unlike many times of the year these cattle that are selling ahead of schedule won't be back they're going on to growing yards or going into some kind of confinement feeding facility and they're not going to come back around like they do whenever uh, you send cattle out to wheat and then the wheat gets dry and those cattle come back into the market but this week's regional weighted averages in the north central states eight to nine hundred pound steer cost you 140 155 compared to 145 94 last week and 147 28 a year ago down the south central states six to seven hundred pound steer cost you 150 170 compared to 157 15 last week and 156 69 a year ago down in the southeast to five to six hundred pound steer cost you 154 28 compared to 155 69 last week and 155 61 a year ago that wraps up your markets for this week Check out all our markets on marketnews.usda.gov and from the Regional Market News Office in St. Joe, Missouri. We'll talk to you next week.